Good evening, brothers. JK, your brother in this struggle. Welcome to another episode of Porn Reboot Coach in the Porsche. Today we're going to talk about money, your financial reboot capital. Why am I talking about money? Because it is critical to your reboot. You need it. And if you do not have it, you want to have it because there is the risk that it will interfere with your long-term reboot. I'm gonna talk briefly about that and share one critical mindset that can help you if you're struggling financially. By struggling financially, I do not necessarily mean that you are broke or you are living paycheck to paycheck. I also mean if you're one of those brothers, and we have quite a few of you that watch this channel, who are making 200K, 250,000, even up to $400,000 a year, but you're maxing out on everything. You're massively in debt. You're due to our on minimum wage. We have more money in the bank than you. This applies to you as well. I'm JK Maisie, founder of Elevated Recovery and head coach at the Porn Reboot System. We help ambitious business owners, entrepreneurs, and executives end their secret out of control behavior with pornography and masturbation discreetly. Today we're talking about financial reboot capital. Let me just give you a brief definition of it. Let's just talk about reboot capital first of all. The process of rebooting doesn't involve just ending your behavior with pornography. It involves changing your lifestyle as well because certain aspects of your behavior with pornography have permeated to other areas of your life. The isolation and the shame has affected you in your social life, your lack of abundance with women. If you're one of those guys who's like, I can't get a partner, right? Sometimes I'll shoot a video which is for partners of porn addicts or for married men. There'll always be one dude in the comment section going like, ho, 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 what partner? If I had a partner, I wouldn't be addicted to pornography. You know those dudes, right? You might be one of them. So much lack of abundance that he really thinks that having a partner is going to fix all his problems. So it's affected that area of your life, but it's also possibly affected your ability to make money. And a lot of us who grew up in, let's say if you had an abusive childhood, sometimes there were money issues there. Many of us have some seriously fucked up mindsets about money. And a lot of these things intermingle with our mental health and the compulsive behaviors we have. I do wanna drop a warning. Just as getting into a relationship, if you are a virgin or if you've never experienced true intimacy will not save you from your porn addiction, becoming wealthy, and when I say wealthy, I don't mean rich, I literally mean wealthy. We have brothers who have come through our program and generated wealth. Becoming wealthy is not going to help you end your out of control behavior as well. So when I say financial reboot capital, this is directed to those brothers who at this point in their life, their finances is a major pain point because there's only so far in the different stages of your reboot you can go before that major pain point needs to be addressed. And a lot of brothers cannot end their behavior because their therapist cannot help them with something like their financial reboot capital, right? If your therapist is not wealthy, if your therapist is not where you want to be, if your therapist is not above upper middle class, then there's not much that they're going to be able to offer you that can help you in that area of your financial reboot capital. And this is why it is critical to work on this area. Now in the porn reboot system, we work on changing your habits first, right? Which will buy you some time, right? You might slip a little bit less. Some men feel like their behavior is fully under control, but that often isn't the case. You might feel that your brain is rewiring. That can happen sometimes, but that's not permanent until you move on to the next state, which is changing your lifestyle. And after you change your lifestyle, you'll have to change your self-image. The same applies to every area of your reboot capital. If you're struggling in your social life, you can change your habits with your social life. But after a while, they're going to erode because it takes so much willpower to maintain those habits. They have to become a part of your lifestyle. You have to have something that you do regularly to nurture that social aspect of your life. Right? Eventually, it becomes your self-image that you are a social person, right? And you no longer have these weird situations where you're in conversations with people and you start shrinking back because you don't know how to express yourself. Same thing with your financial reboot capital, which is what we're talking about today. You can build some good financial habits, which is usually where a therapist or maybe a good 12-step group might help you, right? They're like, hey, you know, save whatever, 10% of your income invest here, don't spend frivolously, all these little, you know, budget frugal steps. But many of those steps will not get you to the place where you ultimately dream of being, right? Let's be honest, guys. Some of you guys might dream of 
a relationship with a woman that you find very attractive, where there's deep intimacy, where there's mind-blowing sex, where the woman is somebody that you're very close to, where there's just happiness, peace, and maybe children in the future, right? Maybe that's what some of you guys want. Some of you may not want kids just yet and you just want to experience being with different beautiful women. You're just like, I just want to have that experience as a man. You only live once. Same thing for your finances. Some of you want to be able to go to an exotic vacation. You're just like, I would just like to go on one exotic vacation. I just want to see what it's like. Or I want to go on an exotic vacation with my girlfriend. Like that's a big deal for me and I want to be the one who pays for it. Right? Or I want to drive a nicer car. I have my dream car. I don't want to wait till I'm fucking 80 years old to do that. Right? I want to drive my dream car. I want to have a nice watch. Whatever it is your thing. I'm not a watch guy, right? But you can't get those things with habits alone. Right? There's certain things that have to become a part of your lifestyle. And eventually they become a part of your self-image. And then you can have those things. I own and I drive a Porsche right? Not a big fucking deal. There are a lot of people who have them. But there was a time a few years ago where it wasn't part of my self-image. I could afford it years ago, but it just wasn't a part of my self-image. I was still building up a very certain type of lifestyle. And then one day, I suddenly realized that, oh, cool, this is part of my self-image. I'm actually a Porsche guy. So I went and I, I took care of the Porsche. I bought the Porsche. By the way, just a little tiny thing we teach this more in the financial reboot program. This is just like a little tip. It has not much to do with this video. One of my mentors taught me a very simple phrase. The receipt is always in the drawer. That means that anything material that I purchase, it is not on credit. It is always fully paid for. I own it. And we teach you that in the financial reboot program. That's the first thing. The second thing is any material thing that I purchase for my self gratification, no matter how I justify it, I must put an equal amount of that into one of my investments. If I cannot purchase that thing, so this vehicle, if I bought it, but whatever I paid for it, if I did not have enough, an equal amount to also immediately put into one of my investments, whether it was in stocks or real estate or insurance or something else, then I don't get to buy it. And we teach you that in the financial reboot program, okay? My point is, eventually it became a part of my self-image and it was something that I could start driving, I could purchase, I could use comfortably. And this is very important. This leads to what I wanna teach you guys today, which is on needs versus wants, all right? Many of us have been taught to only go for the things we need. Right? I was thought that. I remember my mom telling me, you know, she first saw me pull up to her place in a Porsche. That wasn't my Porsche at that point. And we talk about that in the financial reboot program as well, which is just like tasting and touching your dream. This was a few years ago. I had rented a Porsche a few years ago and drove to my mom's place. And she's like, why are you driving a car like that? Remember, well, I haven't told you guys this, but I think I did tell you guys earlier. Maybe another video. It's been a long day. I, my mom just gave up a lot for myself and my siblings. So for her, all these things were like, she's not interested in these things. So she's like, why are you being this kind of guy? A car is something that gets you from point A to point B. And I had bought into that paradigm for so long. What does it matter what car you're driving? It's just something that gets you from point A to point B. It's not something you need. But a car like this is something you want. So I trained myself to only go for the things I need. You know what happened? Because I only went for the things that I needed, right? Whenever it came time for me to truly get something that I really, really needed, which was out of my reach. Let's say years ago, there was a point where I was in a very tough financial situation about a decade plus ago, and I needed a huge infusion of cash to solve this problem. I could not get it. It was so far away, like I could not fathom, and that put me into this tailspin of mild depression and anxiety. How many of you have been in that situation? Ask yourself, have you been in a situation where it doesn't even have to be financial? You're just like, 
oh, it's impossible. We're gonna die. Like we're fucked. We're gonna go bankrupt or we're gonna go to jail. It's just unbelievable. You're just like, I can't do it. I can't make my rents this month. It's just, there's no way, right? That's because you were trained to always just have what you need. When you start getting the things you want and moving past that shame or whatever conditioning it is, your threshold for that which you need becomes so much higher because you're giving yourself permission to get the things that you want. Is this making sense, gentlemen? This is a very important point. Again, happy to explain it more to you guys if you guys are in our group. But my mother did not have the luxury of doing that. And frankly speaking, neither did I. One of the things that I'm very thankful for is the mentors I have. That's one of the reasons I'm giving back now. But there were people who taught me that. They were like, you can think of more. I remember when I was selling door to door, the owner of the company was like, you know, you can make like $190,000 this year. And in my head, it sounded nice, but I didn't believe it. I could do it, but I was like, I don't need that, bro. I need, I need 45K, right? That's what I need. But gentlemen, it is not enough. It's usually not enough to cover any emergencies to take care of shit that goes down with your loved ones, to take care of all the other things that might go wrong. And for some of you who are sitting there going like, you know what, your mom is right. I actually resonate with what she said. Like a car is something that gets you to point A to point B, right? And I've been thought that you should save your money and don't spend it on material things. Instead of taking that extra money that you would have used to purchase something like a Porsche, why don't you take that money and put it into this sort of investment and that sort of investment, all right? That's what you're thinking. There was a time when I did live like that and there's a time for that. I could go into so many things, right? I had a whole nother thought, which is very important, which is those of you who are talking about not buying a nice car are often not at the point in your life where you should even be thinking about that. What you should be thinking about is not even buying a car or a house or an apartment or taking your girlfriend out to go eat somewhere. In fact, you shouldn't even have a girlfriend to be spending a dime on or splitting stuff with. No, because she's taking your time. A lot of you guys need to be investing in yourself, in skill sets, in learning certain skill sets. That's all you should be doing for a couple of years, right? But that's a topic for another day. For those of you who agree with my mom's mindset right now, I'm the one who's taking care of a lot of her finances, right? Now I'm the one taking care of all of those things. Why? Because she was sacrificing for us. She was living a certain lifestyle, but it wasn't enough to guarantee everything for her future, all the way to the day she was in the grave, right? Why is that? Because so many unexpected things come up when you get only the things that you need so many things it is okay to want $75,000 a year it is okay to be like fuck that I want $200,000 a year do you need $200,000 a year no you don't but your mom might need it your sister might need it your dad might need it somebody close to you might have a horrible accent your kid might need it is this making sense with wants and needs you have to be very careful with that. Same thing with relationships. And we talk about this too, the dating reboot program. I don't need to have sex with multiple women. I don't need to go out there and approach a whole bunch of women. I just want one girl, one girl who's gonna make me happy. That's all I need. I'm that kind of guy, I'm the guy who's in a relationship. And then you're in a relationship with the first hot chick that approaches you. The first girl, you just fall for her head over heels, no experience, ride that new relationship energy. And then when the relationship is over, you're desperate again. You're depressed. You can't go out there. You start experiencing all these dry spells and dry streaks. Why? Because you only went for what you needed. Instead of thinking bigger, giving yourself permission to want more. I want to date multiple women. It's a discipline, gentlemen, to want and take action. Anybody can get the shit they need to get the things you actually want? Oh, that takes work. Why? Because the lazy can just sit where they are. The lazy can literally just sit where they are and go like, nah, 
I have everything I need, man. Got a roof over my head. Got myself a little apartment. You know, got this and got this, but don't have health insurance. Don't even have full coverage insurance on your vehicle. One accident away. One health issue away. One family member calling you and needing something away from your whole life falling apart. Because you have all the things you need. This is not a fucking fairy tale. This is your brain fucking lying to you. This is years and years of conditioning, right? I encourage you, and we will always encourage you in the Porn Reboot system to want more. We will show you how to challenge whatever conditioning it is that says that you're greedy to want so much, that said it's wrong to want. I lived that way for many years and I have no regrets for switching from needs to wants. Not just because of what it's done for me, but because of what it's allowed me to do for others, including the brothers in the porn reboot system. That's a story for another day. But if I only worked with a certain number of clients that I needed, like all I needed, I'll be very honest with you, was a handful of one-on-one -on -one clients. I have the highest rate on the planet. I won't even tell you how much. <laughs> I don't do one-on-ones anymore, right? It's ridiculous. But you come to me in 90 days, you're leaving, you're done with porn. Especially if I'm your daily accountability partner, you're done. I only need like, I don't know, three to four clients. And that's all I needed. But I wanted more. I wanted to help many men. But there was a part of me that said, who the fuck are you, JK? Who are you to go out there and put your hand and your influence in the life of other men? I didn't believe in myself. I thought it was wrong to be a person who put themselves on YouTube and had influence on other people's lives. Like I thought, I was just like, you're not that person, man. You shouldn't be doing that shit. Just work with one or two people. But then, thousands of men would have no control over their behavior. I would not have the ability to actually push myself and grow and nurture the talents that were given to me. If I only selfishly focused on the things that I needed. The final thing I want to mention, gentlemen, is that that idea of getting only the things we need, a lot of times it is we're scared too, not just selfish. We are afraid of going for the things we want. That's why years ago, I would look at somebody, literally, if I saw a dude who flew past in a spanking new shiny Porsche, just like, like red, jacked, in the black shirt, the glasses, like, I'll be like, what a fucking douchebag. Probably look like a douchebag driving around the fucking mid Midwest, right? I'll be like, what a douchebag. It's probably his parents' money. He's probably a drug dealer. Oh, he's probably like an athlete because he's black and has the hair and all that shit. Those are the things I would just be a straight up hater. But deep down, that would be something I wanted. And I used to think like that. I used to look at dudes who were outwardly successful. We're not talking about the inside today. We're talking about the outside, okay? And I would hate but I was afraid of going for the things I wanted. I was afraid of my family judging me. I was afraid of my hardworking mother and father looking at me and going like, we didn't raise you to be this kind of person. And let me tell you something. My parents have not judged me for these things. Sure, my mom may like bring up things because you know she's not comfortable with certain aspects of my lifestyle. But at the end of the day, she knows that I can take care of her. And she knows I take care of other people in our family. And to her, that's the important thing. It's the value of generosity that she put into her kids. But a lot of my only get the things you need, afraid, afraid of failure too, afraid of the work that it took. So again, I would also look at other people and be like, ah, that dude's a scammer. That's the only way that he could do it. If you really work, if you really go for the things you want, the only way to do it is to do something evil or bad or rip off other people in order to get those things. That was what I used to think. Why? Because I couldn't see the path. And trust me, gentlemen, 
the path is fucking hard. And I'll end this by saying that it's not for everybody. But the financial reboot capital is for everybody. I'm talking about the path of going beyond, beyond to everything I want. If you want that, I can show you how to get it. You guys only get a very small peek into my life, a very small portion of it, which is the porn reboot part. There is a lot that goes on. There are other businesses I run, there are other aspects of my life, and I've had brothers, especially those who are in the intensive program, who I've had one-on-one -on -one calls with, that's the only place I do one-on-one -on -one calls in the intensive program, go like, JK, I'd like to learn more about these things. I think this is important to me. And so this is kind of what the test video, I don't know how you guys are gonna take it, but it's not just about rebooting from pornography, guys hitting the reset button on your entire life. And I gotta admit, I am a little bit nervous putting this video out because deep down, even though I've changed my lifestyle, as I said, it was only a few years ago that the self-image part changed. So I'd say with the self-image part, when it comes to finances, I'm probably at about, honestly, 80%, right? Which is much better than most people who are <laughs> my age. I do quite well for myself. But at the same time, I'm very sensitive to the brothers who watch the videos. And I will be the first person to say that the financial reboot program, it's a coaching program, it's not gonna get you to 100%. It may get you to 100% where you are, right? But one of the things it is going to do is, it's not just mindset. Anybody can talk about money mindset. We're gonna talk about everything. You're gonna have spreadsheets on how to manage your budget you're going to be taught how to invest in stocks. In fact, we're gonna even go to the extent where you can pick the stocks I'm picking. I have no problem showing you guys my portfolio. We're gonna talk about real estate. I'm going to introduce you to the person who manages my money. I'm gonna introduce you to the person who manages my real estate portfolio. We're gonna have live calls with them and I'm gonna teach you guys everything because Frankly speaking, when it comes to the financial aspect of it, whether it's with real estate and other aspects of my life, I've done best when I have shared freely. It was very generous people that showed me the game and I'm doing the same for you guys. So that's all I got for you guys today. If you guys really wanna see more videos on the financial reboot part, I'm happy to share it with y'all because I know not everybody is gonna join that program, but you gotta let me know in the comment section right? You got to share some love. If you ask me a question in the comment section, some of you are just saying stupid shit there. Those of you who say thank you, I appreciate you. Those of you who are just running your mouth saying shit that has nothing to do with the video. Oh, I slipped again. I relapsed, blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to talk to you. All right. But if you want something, if you're like JK, can you talk about this, 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 this specifically? I'll shoot the video. I'm not one of these fucking YouTubers that needs a Patreon, right? I will do it for you, but you guys are not asking. Ask and I will do it for you, right? We're not like a massive, massive YouTube channel, right? Why? Because, well, I speak the truth and people don't like to hear the truth. <laughs> Everybody likes to hear the habit stuff, right? The sweet stuff, the stuff that the nofab, willpower, neuro bullshit, all these things, people like to hear that stuff, but they don't want to hear the work it takes. They don't want to hear that it takes two years to rewire your brain. Nobody wants to hear that. They want to hear about the root cause and willpower and, and all this shit, right? So gentlemen, for those of you who watch, understand I appreciate and I love you guys. And if you ask, I will create for you, all right? Take care. Talk to y'all later.